a man the Lord has anointed to bless to the service. Let's celebrate the apostle of our time. Apostle Jesse to a celebrate him, celebrate him, celebrate him. Oh, yeah. smile to your face. He said, let me hear you shout hallelujah. If you believe that the 11th hour miracle will hit your life, can I hear your amen like a thunder? You unstoppable. Are you saying amen or man? I say you unstoppable. That your amen is economical. I say you are unstoppable. This one you shouted is hanging on top of the roof. I say you are unstoppable. In the name of Jesus. Because the devil did not succeed in killing you yesterday night. You are qualified for the miracle of this season. Did you hear me very clear? I say because the devil did not succeed. In killing you yesterday night, you are qualified for the miracle of this season. If you believe it, is seal it up with a better amen. Amen is a let it be, so seal it up with a better amen. It is a great honor and a privilege to be a blessing to God's people this morning. Standing here is not a right, it's just a privilege. Please help me to celebrate my good friend, the great man of God. Not a blessing to this church alone, but a blessing to the body of Christ. Father to the fathers, pastor to pastors, minister to ministers. Please help me and celebrate the prophet in the heart. Our prophet, your prophet, my prophet. I, 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 is that the way you people do it here? You can do better than what you are doing. Behind every successful man, I always say there is a wife and not a knife. Because if you make a mistake and marry a knife, you won't go far in life. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's some that like, but they are not deserved. Wife and knife. They sound alike, but they are not the same. Please help me and celebrate the mama. The way you guys are doing it, I don't like it. Just celebrate that. Very, very important. My prayer to both of them is that the grace of God in their life will not run dry. I want you to celebrate one more important person. Without that person here, there is nothing called church, and you are the one. Celebrate yourself. All right. We are going to be on the first land right now. We are going to raise our spiritual antenna high. We are going to get connected to the heavenly broadcasting network. We are going to download from the mind of the spirit a few minutes from now. You don't need the whole Bible for your life to be transformed. You need a single word from the Lord. When that word hit your life, it will put your life on motion. You were wrong with the spirit of overtaker. And the people who have overtaken you before now, you will overtake them. That your amen is provoking my anointing. If you believe that overtaking is allowed, let me hear your amen like a thunder. Father, we thank you. 
operate upon your word and they bring interpretation through your word to us. For in Jesus' unfailing name, we have prayer. You can celebrate Jesus with a BBB clap of friend as you have your seat. Every man is a gate that leads to somewhere. And whom you follow determines what follows it. Everybody you see in the surface of the earth today, man, be man of God, be a woman of God, be a personality, a reputable personality. Every man is a gate that leads to somewhere. But whom you follow determines what follows you. I was speaking briefly on the mystery about the altar. Mystery about the altar. A few minutes from now, I want you to pay a rapt attention through the revelation that God is going to teach us through his word. What do I say? The mystery about the altar. The mystery of the altar. The mystery of the altar. I want to start by saying that altar is a solemn place reserved for divinity or a deity. Altar is what? A solemn place reserved for a divinity or a deity. Altar has a voice. Altar can speak. Altar has the capability or the power to defend. To kill, to raise, and to bring down. Behind every altar, there is a power residing there. And wherever the altar has been stationed, there are traffics, traffic of spirits. Anywhere you see altar being situated or built, there are what? Traffic of spirits. Altar is a place of slaughter. Altar is a, a place of slaughter where you come with all manner of problem and then lay it upon the altar, it will be killed in the altar. Are you understanding it now? Altar behind every altar, there is a strong man. Behind every altar, there is what a strong man. Altar. It's a spiritual base of a church, of a community, or a nation. Altar is so powerful that we must not play with altar. Either the altar of the living God or the altar of Satan. Both of them, there are powers that are residing there. When you go to the house of God, you are not going to see God visit you. But you will see a man representing God. That is the strong man behind the altar. We have him here sitting down. You go to the house of Satan. You are not going to see Satan physically. But who are you going to see? You are going to see the representative of Satan. Even in the house of Satan. And as you walk in into the house of God. The first thing you will see is the altar. You enter the house of Satan. The first thing you will see there is the altar of Satan. What, but what is different between the altar of God and the altar of Satan? Is the power residing in that altar. Are you, under, are you still here? If you believe in the altar, altar defend your battle. It fights for you. In the altar of the living God, there are agents of God backing up the altar. And that was the understanding that Hannah had about the mystery about the altar. She had this issue confronting her life. And that issue is the issue of barrenness. She had been molested, relegated to a corner, mocked. She dies. Pity. But how Hannah never been intimidated 
when she had the understanding about what altar is. The Bible says anytime that there is Shiloh, she always come to the altar of God to do her, to come and worship God and to drop her sacrifice before the altar. And the particular time came that Hannah came, there was nobody there. Hannah was not looking for the prophet to prophesy. Hannah was not looking for the apostle to lay hand on her. Hannah was not looking for anybody to assist her because she had the understanding about the mystery of the altar and the power that is flowing from the altar. And she moved straight to the altar and lay down there and raised her spiritual antenna high and begin to call on the God of heaven and earth. As you are calling today, he will answer you. That your email is hanging somewhere. She had the understanding about the altar. She don't need to consult anybody before going to the altar. As you and I don't need anybody to, co to consult anybody before you can come before the altar to do or to bring your petition before you. Because it has the power to bring solution to all life problems. And that's why you can do every other thing anyhow, any other place. You don't do anyhow in the altar. No matter how small the size of the altar may be, but there are powers residing in the altar. Hannah was so much confronted. She would have given up, but she never do that. They came to the day that Hannah came to the altar and she knelt down before God and was crying unto God. Today stated that the words that was coming out of his mouth ceased to come out. And the Hannah began to grow in the spirit. Have you come to the point of your prayer? That you pray and I pray and the word sits in your mouth. But your stomach is talking. That was the dimension of prayer that Hannah gave to. It was not praying gentleman's prayer. It was not praying a prayer of a person without a body. That sometimes when we raise the prayer point in the chair and ask people to pray and they are looking at others like color television. It's because issues of life are not confronted here. When you have a body in your spirit and you pray with body, it will be to you like the way it we are to Jesus. When Jesus had the body and the body of the whole world was upon his shoulder, the Bible said when he came to the Gethsemane, when he was praying, the heat that was coming out of his body was as thick as blood. He was not praying a gentleman's prayer. There's no way you pray a gentleman's prayer that will make the heat that is coming out of your body to be thick as blood. He has the blood in his spirit. He called Peter and said, please help me to pray for one hour. And Peter said, master, we're going to help you. We're going to join you to carry this body. But while Jesus Christ went yonder to pray, suddenly they slept off. Any time, many a times you want men to help you, they will not help you. They will disappoint you. Jesus had the blood in his spirit. And he was praying and asked them to assist him. The second time he came, they were sleeping. At the third time, he just announced to them they should sleep on. For the hour has come. When you have a burden in your spirit, nobody tells you how to pray. Even when you're a servant of God, give you three days fasting and prayer, you say, Daddy, this one is for make it seven days. If you give you six to six, you say, no, daddy, that six to six, let me make it a dry, the first three days, then I can do six to six. You will be the one prescribing or talking or directing on how, because you know how hard the situation is to you. But you don't need to wait until that particular time. You need to understand the mystery about the altar, whether the pastor is there, whether your father in the Lord is there or not. There is an altar in this place that God is residing. When you're walking into it, get in into the prophetic world and power operating under the mountain of Christ and glory ministers. Then you will see what has happened in your life. Can I have an amen in the house? The devil has a way that he laid burden upon people. And that's why when they enter into the church to move their body, it becomes very, very difficult. Listen to me, you need to lay down those bodies by the side. 
Because there is a God who has positioned his power and his spirit in the church. That any time that you come in, no matter what is that body, heaven will lift it up. And I prophesy to you, whatever thing the enemy has bestowed upon you as a body, I command it to be lifted. If that your amen is louder, your own body will be lifted. The mystery about the altar, we need to understand that. Hannah has the understanding of that and he never played with it. To the point when she prayed and prayed. And the word ceased to come out from his mouth. That took me to the place in the Bible. Where Jesus said we know not what we ought to pray as we ought. But the spirit of God helped our infirmity. Infirmity is your weakness, my weakness. With a groaning which cannot be uttered. You come to the point you can no more utter a word. But your stomach is talking. You are vibrated. You are praying. Because when the well of your life filled up, you begin to overflow. Out of your belly shall flow out. What? The rivers of the living water. It came to that point. And the man of God came out, the high priest, and looked at the woman and thinking that that woman is playing at the altar. Watch, because he had never seen the dimension of that kind of prayer before. And Hannah said to her, uh, to him, I am a woman of a sorrowful spirit. As it is in my heart, I pour it unto the Lord. And then the man of God was provoked from the inner tenacity. And, and he made a pronouncement upon her. And I said, may God answer your prayer. And the Bible says, the countenance of the woman changed. I don't know whether you have come to church this morning with a gloomy countenance. Because of one thing or the other you are passing through. I prophesy to you that a great light that will bring a miracle, that will make your face to shine, will come upon you in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, the countenance of Hannah changed. And Hannah walked away. With the miracle that she has been expecting for too long. Who told you that this is only 18? You are going to end this month. It is not yet over until you win. If you do not win, the year will not be over. It took God only for five days to create the heaven and the earth. On the sixth day, he met man to take control over what he has created. On the seventh day, he rested. But we still have up to 43 days in the year 2018. It is not yet over until you win. And this is 43 days representing the 43 different mecca doors we open for you. And all that you have not achieved since January, may God give it to you in these 43 days. If that your amen is louder, your own way appear. If it's louder and clearer, it will manifest. In the name of Jesus. The book of Judges chapter 6 and verse 6. God is up to something great. Judges chapter 6 and verse 6. The book of Judges chapter 6, verse 6. And Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Benyanites. And the Israel was greatly impoverished uh -huh, because of the Midianites. And what happened? And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord. They cried unto the Lord. Because there is no much time on our side. I want us to pick something home there. Because the children of Israel we are very much impoverished. The word impoverished is defined, interpreted, is the apostate of living. They are very, very poor. And things we are not working. Because of the media. Because of the enemies of their destiny. The enemy's joy and happiness is to subject you into suffering. But God's plan for you is for you to rejoice evermore. And the media now make these people Israelite to be highly impoverished, to be poor. For the spirit of lack and poverty 
to be reigning in the whole land of Israel. But God was not sleeping any time. His children is passing through the hard times. God does not sleep. God have to raise a man. May God raise you in your father's house. May God raise you in your society. May God raise you in your community. God raise a man called Gideon. And when God called Gideon mighty man of valor, Gideon look at himself. How can you call me mighty man of valor? He look at himself. That word is bigger than whom he is looking at. He look at himself highly impoverished. How do I become a mighty man of valor? From where? I am from the poorest family in the land of Manasseh. The least in the tribe. How can it be that I will be, be a mighty man of valor? You know, there is a situation that when confronting you, you will start to stammer. If you thought that you are tired and very, very eloquent, this situation for God to call him mighty man of valor, God has already declared the end from the beginning. He has already known who Gideon is and who he will become and who he was. And they called him by what he will become mighty man of valor. And when God raised him and said, go on a peak, call the people that will fight this battle because your days of poverty and lack is over. And the 32,000 men gathered themselves. And God said to him that this 32,000 is too many. God doesn't work with multitudes many at times. Are you understanding what I'm saying? He said, take them for a test. And when he took them for a test, about only 300 passed the test. That 1,700 fed the test. And they said, with this 300, you are going to fight the Midianites. And you are going to defeat them. I don't know what I've been confronting you. But by, with God by your side, you will conquer that enemy this year. I say, you will conquer that enemy this year. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did it stop there? And when Gideon was looking around the city to discover the basis of that particular suffering that made the people of the land to be suffering, he discovered that the main reason or the main source of the problem is that there are altars that are speaking against the people of the land. Any bad situation or serious situation that a nation, a country, or a, a, a community, a people is facing, there is an altar that has been raised, sponsored by wickedness, to fight. It will take a man with an ego eyes to discover that. And the Gideon discovered that there are altars in the land that is troubling the destinies of men, that is dying down, that is the cause of their poverty. Bible say he chose ten men and said, We will not do this thing by the day, we will go by the night. And when we go by the night, we are going to do exactly that God wants us to do to dethrone the altar. But we are not going to go empty handed, we are going to go with seven bullocks to put down an altar and to raise an altar. Because he discovered if you don't discover the source of your problem, solution cannot come. He discovered that the source of the problem of the land is as a result of the negative altar that have raised against the land. Any negative altar speaking against your destiny. Today, I release the 72 thunders of Jehovah to blast them into pieces in the name of Jesus. The altar was what he discovered that is the problem. And he discovered that he will not take every man, every woman, to go and destroy the altar. He said, what will I do? He raised about ten men who will understand the work, who will understand, who have the understanding about the mystery of the altar. Throwing down the altar and raising an altar that will speak. And they chose ten men. And those two men, they could not go by the day, they went by the night. 
And when they get to the place where the evil altar is, they began to do what? To destroy the altar. I don't know the altar that I've been speaking. But God has raised an altar that will swallow every other altar that I've been speaking against you. Can that amen be better than that? For those negative altars will not speak again. But the altar of the living God will speak for you. Behind every altar there is an angel. It's a flaming swarm. At the altar of the living God. We are man cannot penetrate. Angels penetrate them. Are you getting what I'm saying? With the flaming sword in their hands. Fighting the battles you cannot fight for yourself. There are some certain battles you cannot fight. Until your angel move. Victory cannot come over the battle. When you understand the mystery about angelic being. And God says that I have made the ministers flames of fire. But I have made them a haste of salvation that minister unto the people. You can deploy them to go and do something for you. And return back. Angels are servants, but we are sons. An angel, servants and sons have, have no equal right. We send them for an assignment. We don't pray in the name of angel, but we send them to an assignment. And they go and do what? It's a good day assignment. The other day I was praying a prayer. I said, God, don't give me small, small angel my blessing to bring to me. Because small, small angels... There are powers that work in the atmosphere that can arrest them. The Bible says that when Daniel set his heart to pray, on the first day, he had not started praying. He set his heart to pray for 21 days. An answer was released to his prayer. Angels were deployed. But that angel was arrested and was detained. Imagine that. Have you seen where my prayer point is coming from? Angel was not only arrested, he was also detained. But thank God for Daniel. He didn't stop praying. As he continued praying, the heaven was troubled. But we have deployed an angel to go with an answer to his prayer. What is happening? When they look through the radar, they discover that the angel that was sent was arrested and was detained. And God had to release another angel. That kind of angel when they uh, David the number the people of Israel. The Bible says one angel killed 70,000 footed men in a night. One angel. And God deployed that angel. As the as soon as the angel moved and it came to that place, you know the powers that arrested, arrested the angel that was sent initially. The succubus and eight incubus. They are male and female demons. They are their spirits. That governs the Persia at that time, and they call it the Prince of Persia. They work in the heavens. They suspended him there, arrested him there. But at the appearance of the archangel, that angel was free. Many of what you have been expecting from God have been released since January. But there are angels that are coming with it have been suspended somewhere. But I prophesy that every of your angels that have been arrested and detained, let God of heaven release the archangel to go and free them one after the other. In the name of Jesus. And that's why when God sent angel to Zachariah, a very strong angel like an angel and, a, and they say go and they tell Zachariah in his old age the wife will conceive and they will bear. And the guy doubted what the angel told him and he gave him a slap. He said because you doubted what I am sent to from the God Almighty who command me to tell you that you are going to bring forth and you doubted it death and dog. God didn't send him that one. He didn't send him to make him deaf and dumb. What he sent him is to go and deliver good news. But for Zachariah to understand that his own kind of angel is not same same kind of angel. Not angel you were toy with. He gave his slap and said, because of you doubting what I am sent to. 
you will not speak, you will not talk until the assignment given to me come to pass. And they become so the same way he declared. And Zakara begin to do be, 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 be. He said, What is happening? I can't talk. That was a man that had been speaking, but suddenly. Be, 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 be. Not every angel you're toy with. And that is the kind of angel you can discover in the book of Isaiah chapter 54. Verse 16. He said, I have an instrument in my hand. Can somebody read it? Read it. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16. Quickly. As I'm beginning to round it up. Isaiah 54. Verse 16. Isaiah 54, yeah. verse 16. Yeah. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coal in the fire. I have created the smith that bloweth the fire, the coal from the fire. There is an angel that is called an angel of fire. His own is to blow fire. It's like, you know, go smith, when they are pumping that time, the fire come out, the yellowish fire. Before you know it, it comes to the point that it becomes bluish. It's an angel of fire. And what happened again? And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. Uh -huh. The next one. And I have created the waster to destroy. I have created the waster to destroy. There is an angel called the destroyer. The devil is not the original bad boy. Devil learned evil. But there is an angel created for destruction. It's not in hellfire. It's not in the kingdom of darkness. It's in the kingdom of our God. Anytime that the battle becomes too severe, God deployed angel. Angel that destroy. And when he moves, one angel can destroy one city. It's a weapon of warfare. You have a charge of God. But the three days is remaining in 2018. Many people are still going to die in this 43 days, but you will not be among them. Is it the way you are saying the amen? I say you will not be among them. Members of your household will not be among them. Any of your loved ones will not be among them. If that your amen is louder, that death will be counsel. There is an angel that is called the destroyer. When God deploys him, any time that the war is severe, that is the time they normally come out. I don't know the battles that have been confronting you as I'm bringing this message to a close. There is this kind of angel and the angel that stand before the altar of God. They move around the altar. That's why any time that you bring problem before the altar, that problem dies at the altar. As the word is being declared from the altar, the mystery about the altar and the power behind the altar begin to work for you. You need to believe your prophet. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20, it says, believe the word of God, that shall be what? Established. Believe the word of a servant, the prophet, you will do what? You will prosper. Your prophet is in your prophet. Your prophet is in where? Is in your prophet. You want to prosper, you believe your prophet. When he declares words to you, believe it. The anointing you respect will work for you. It will take you to the next level. Why? Because there is an altar where God has positioned him. And that altar is the altar of breakthrough. Altar that can remove people's destiny. When people ask me that song, they say, they say uh, change my destiny. I say, God cannot change somebody's destiny. God can remove it. Can remove your destiny because your, your destiny is already made. He can remove it and change and remove it and turn it into the face that is supposed to show the right path. Are you getting what I'm saying? And in this meeting, God is going to remove your destiny and bring you to the lamplight. Are you saying amen at all? I say we'll bring you to the lamplight. The woman cried unto God in the altar. And when the man of God prophesied to her, 
her countenance changed. That is how Hannah conceived and um, give birth to one son that is greater and bigger than 1,000 sons. I told God, if you will not give me a child that will be a positive addition to this generation, don't give me. Even when I'm married, I say, I will love my wife until I die. I don't want a troublesome child. I don't want, I don't bargain for it. He says, don't give me. Kill him or let it die. Are you getting what I'm saying? Some people cry for children. I say, anyhow, anyhow. Hence, a child I go take. Look, and then they fool all over the streets. They constitute nuisances everywhere. And that's why I put their head on the altar. Whether they like it or not, you will serve God. By fire, by earthquake. You will serve it to. When I have full, fulfilled my part, I leave the rest for God. You will do what God wants you to do. And when you are deviating, I will tell you this is not what God told me. And sometimes when you see me flogging them, prophesying, I say, open your hand. That thing you did, the devil wants to use it to corner your destiny. I say it will not stand in the name of Jesus. I say, are you saying amen or you are not saying amen? Amen. He's crying, he's saying amen. I don't cause them. I flog you. I prophesy on top of the floor. They came so that the thing can penetrate well. Are you understanding? I want to lead them in the path of righteousness and not in your own path. Because if you are not careful, if you are not careful, they become like the world war children of this generation. But when the altar of God is fighting their battle, they will become whom God said they will become. Don't just allow them to do their own thing. Connect them to the altar. There is a power that can protect them from the altar. I told my son, as you have been to use phone, you navigate into the internet and they do this one and do the I say in the internet, there are good ones, there are bad sides. There are good sides, there are bad sides. I begin to open a lot of things to him. If he think that I'm not away, but tell him that I've been using it before I get back to you. So, if you follow this side, you will get to the top. You follow this side, not only be a vagabond, you will end up in hellfire. I say everything is in your hand as you carry that, that palm top, that laptop, that food in your hand. I tell you, follow the good part or you follow the bad part. But when I connect to the altar, it will become a guide to you. When you come to the by side, you will say to yourself, I do not belong to this side. I belong to the other side. Everybody stand up on your feet. There is mystery behind the altar. Don't tell the children and say, let us leave them. When they grow, they will know. It's a lie. In our own time, when we are 25 years, huh, there are things we don't know. But the children of 10 years now know what you don't know when you were 25 years. Yes. 10 years. So if you don't sit up, you want to handle them the way we are handled. I will tell you that every information, including the one you will not know until you die, they have already known it. And that's why sometimes you will see somebody spend his hard earned money, send their child to overseas. When they come back, they will tell your dad, fuck you, fuck you, man. It's your money. You train the person. But when you understand the mystery about the altar, you saw the life of that person to the altar. I tell you, no matter where you run to, they try to corrupt you. The altar will be speaking because altar has voice. It can speak. Many of us were dedicated to idol. Some of us were not even dedicated to the church. Because what our fathers used to believe in their altar. But to you, make sure you dedicate your children to the altar of the living God. Not only dedication, train them in the word of the law from the altar. I guarantee you that they will not escape it. Because there is a power that will guide them. One prayer I don't fail to pray for my children. The seed of righteousness planted inside of you will not die. I don't fail praying that prayer. 
the seed of righteousness planted from your infancy into your life will not die. Let it keep growing. That is what will give you fear of him who have called you. A young lady came to me and said, that the other day when I was pastoring a particular church, he said, he said, he said the, the devil was telling me not to come to church. I said, eh, and you are discussing with devil. He said, he was talking to me. I said, no, I must be in the church. And he said again, don't go. I said, I will go. He said, daddy, finally, I came. I said, congratulations. I said, people like you are the people set and talk to you person like me that they know that my life is connected to the altar can never tell me to not go to the church. Therefore cannot try it. But you are discussing with him. He talk to you, you talk to him. He reply and he give you another one. At the end you defeated. Congratulations you defeated. If you defeat today, will you defeat tomorrow? He will stay for back. And at the time devil returned back and talked to her she stopped coming to the church. I say, it's people like you that the devil can stop. I mean, we always talk to. But if your life is connected to the altar, and the devil knew it well, that you understand the mystery about the altar, and you don't want to disconnect yourself from the altar, and the power of God is flowing from the altar, protecting your life. The power from the altar is prospering you. The altar, the strong man from the altar is blessing your life. And all the prophecies that is releasing is working on your head. There is nothing the devil say that you will listen to me. That is a God in this place. Go out there and tell people about what God is doing here. Hannah did not consult anybody. He came. Not until the man of God is there. But he believed in the mystery about the altar. The man of God being there good. If he's not there, fine. But God has used him to raise an altar. There is power residing here. And that's why anyone that stands in this altar, whether it be a small boy, the grace that is operating in this commission will walk on the head as soon as he speaks. That's why you should not look down on anyone standing, you know, doing anything in the altar. Get connected to what God is about to do. I guarantee you that these 43 days, the altar of the living God will speak for your destiny. Amen. Can that amen be better than that? Amen. Can that amen sound better than that? Amen. You are going to pray one prayer upon then I drop this man. And the prayer you are going to pray is the first Kings chapter 13 reading from verse 1. The Bible says there came a man of God out of Peter. Huh? First Kings chapter 13 and verse 1. He, he's talking about a man of God that came out from from Peter. Are you there? First Kings chapter 13. Verse 1. Verse 1. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord. By the word of God. Unto Bethel. Uh -huh. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. Uh -huh. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar, altar. thus says the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David. Holy there. Thank you, man of God. God sent the man of God in that place to cry against the altar. And when the man of God was doing what God sent him to do, a man again standing on the strange altar called Jeroboam, trying to stop the man of God, and his hand cried out. Altar versus altar. God sent him to destroy the altar. Because those altar is speaking against people. I don't know the altar that is speaking against you. Today, as we cry unto God with one prayer point, that altar was scattered. Hey, hey, hey. I said that altar will scatter. Amen. Slap your hand and say, my father, my father. I said, slap your hand and say, my father, my father. As I slap with my hand, I command every evil altar speaking against my life. Scatter. Scatter. On your prayer. On your prayer. On your prayer. Leke para bakasita kaporobo shata badahaya. Zundo kopa kapere ne garagabosha, lento lopa kapere ne gabosha tabada haya, leka taka taka tali taka poto lopa ne garagadiya, leka to alta skata, let the altar that is speaking against your destiny, or that speaking against your marriage, or that speaking against your health, as you slap with your hand, let that altar skata. In 
in Jesus unfailing name we have prayer. Let me have two amen and one fire. Stretch out your hands towards the altar, Lord. I stand in the exalted altar under the New Testament covenant by the blood. I prophesy to everyone hearing the sound of my voice. Standing in this exalted altar that has voice that they can speak. Decreeing over their destiny that all the altars that have lifted up their head against you. I decree that the altar of the living God will swallow them. Altars that have waged war against your business, against your finances, against your marriage. From now on, world, let the altar of the living God scatter them. Every negative declaration they have made from the evil altar against you, I command them this morning, let them expire. Let them expire. Let them expire. Let them expire. Let me hear your MS seven times. One, two, three, go. Two, three, four, five, six, and number seven. The altar of the living God will speak better things in your destiny. As the servant of God prophesied to your life, every prophecy that have been hanging will be activated. I don't like that amen at all. I decree that your angel will be activated. Angel of your destiny will be activated. Angel that bring money will be activated. Angel that bring wealth and riches will be activated. I decree from now, let your angel be activated. I put a seal to every declaration I have made over your life. I decree that these 43 days will bring unusual breakthrough to your life. There are 43 different doors we open for you. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' unfailing name, we have prayer. If your amen is louder, you will be forced to testify. 